Hi all, it's Rio Klaus Inc. Today our discussion point is Azure Identity Protection. First things first, the, the, the value of identity protection, why it's here, how and why does it benefit you as admins as well as end users. Okay, the functionality within identity protection. Okay, it, it may be great identifying risk, but it's just as great remediating risk. Okay, and having that analysis off the back end, if that's pushing it to Power BI or some sort of a SOC or, or SIEM service in essence. Okay, why is the back end automation important to us in terms of not just behavioral analytics, the processing? Do we have any statistical data or case studies to back us up into why we use identity protection? We're going to look at, well, we're going to have a deeper dive into the detection of risk, okay? The severity levels from low, medium, and high. What do these tell us? What are the conditional factors Microsoft are looking at to be able to flag a user as a low, medium, or high risk? The identifying risk as well, the types of policies we can create, okay? As well as the alerts, the digest alerts from a weekly basis, i.e. Uh, a proactive uh, alert, as well as reactive alerts. When a user does get flagged as risky, what happens? Who gets sent an email? When? Okay, these are all questions you're probably asking yourself and we're gonna try and run through this from a high level perspective. Okay, so first things first, let's access the portal. The portal is portal.azure.com. Okay, this is, your, this is your management pane or management console. We need to be able to open and access identity protection. Either in the, the home page, the widget pane, you can click on identity protection as a service, or you can search in the top bar here. For simplicity, I'm just gonna select identity protection from the widget pane, okay? You may you may notice some of the some of the icons icons down the left hand side are grayed out, okay, or don't appear as they should do. Two factors to that: you've got the roles, you've got the licensing. From a roles perspective, you either need global admin, security admin, security operator, global reader, so, so on and so forth. Okay, I can list some uh, uh, Microsoft documentation in terms of the least privileged roles you, you need or require to access this particular pane. You've then got the licensing aspect, okay? From an Azure, Azure AD free tier basis, you may be able to see some of the high level statistical data in terms of how many risks you got, low, medium, or high. You won't be able to see the user data in the back end. You will need an Azure Active Directory P2 license for, for, for that to, to appear and for you to be able to leverage that data. You may have noticed when you've created conditional access policies in the past, when you set the conditions and you try and leverage the, the user risk base um, conditions, it, it, it's either grayed out or requires a P2 license. That's because it utilizes the likes of Azure Identity Protection. Okay. With, with Identity Protection, we can also coincide this with on-premise Active Directory. If you've got a hybrid situation in place with Azure AD Connect syncing your on-prem identities to the cloud, and you're using the, the password or, um, authentication of password hash, okay, you'll be able to see leak credentials as well, not just your, not just from your identity management solution in the cloud, which is Azure AD, but Active Directory domain services as well. So before we before we get into the tools and the, the policies itself, we need to understand why automation is important. So let me give you um, Slight brief in terms of the statistical data Microsoft have provided. 24 trillion security signals combined with intelligence made Microsoft track by monitoring more than 40 nation state groups and over 140 threat groups. Okay, that just tells you the vast scale of, of signals, um, identification, um, and money Microsoft are throwing at this service for this service to be the service you utilize in your organization and add value to your organization. From January 2021 to 2022, they've blocked more than 25.6 billion Azure AD brute force attacks. So that's, you know, brute force attacks, um, password sprays, uh, Trojans, so on and so forth, 
okay? We, for, throughout the stack at the moment, we're seeing a lot of compromises. You know, we're alluding to the fact that admins need to be enforcing MFA across their, their users, not just for privileged um, identities, but also non-privileged identities. This just adds that extra layer of value to, to what you're already doing, okay? In terms of detecting risk, okay, we've got the, the action panes on the left-hand side. We've got user risk policy, we've got sign and risk policy. We can also touch on the MFA, uh, registration policy. That's just another uh, enforcement method of, of multi-factor authentication or that two-layer layer, um, auth. So in terms of identity protection, there's kind of two main policies, what user risk and sign and risk, okay? So when a user is flagged as risky, by the system, this is done automatically on your behalf. At this point, it's just reporting the analytical data. If you don't have a policy in place to be able to identify if people are being flagged as, as risky, then you won't have conditions and you won't have enforcement. So you need to be able to create policies. What do these policies actually look for in terms of low, medium and high risk? Okay, what does that mean to you? It could be anonymous IP address use, okay? It could be unfamiliar IP addresses. You may be in a home location majority of the time and then someone's accessed the, the, the user account from another location which has a different IP address, okay? It's not, it's not the norm. It could be atypical travel, okay? Or impossible travel, in other, in other words. It may be that I'm in uh, the UK um, at seven, seven o'clock at night. Um, I'm in... I'm in Australia at 8 p.m. the same day. That's impossible travel. I can't travel from the UK to Australia within the, the hour. Uh, malware linked IP addresses, unfamiliar sign-in properties, it could be, okay. It could be your, your attempt to sign into a user account multiple times and getting the password wrong, okay. Leak credentials, we've already touched upon the use of, of that hybrid uh, configuration and the leak credentials from your ADDS to Azure AD. Password spread a lot more. Okay, so, so that's that's what the risk policies give us. If we click on the risk policies, for example, use risk policy, they're quite straightforward. It's, it's kind of three, three, three nodes, the assignment, conditions, and uh, enforcement controls, just like additional access policies. Okay, but this is very much dumbed down. So if we select all users, we can select, okay. Who, who do I want to sign this, or who's the scope of this, this policy itself? All users or selected individuals and groups? If it's selected individuals and groups, it, I, I may want to scope this to a particular security group, okay? It may be that I've got departments within my organization and I want to uh, segment who is targeted by which policy. And I've also got an exclusion there as well. Maybe you've got a break dash glass account, which you want to exclude just for redundancy options, okay? User risk. Okay, what, 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 what's the severity? What, what, what risk are we looking at? Are we looking at low, medium or high? Microsoft do provide a, a native documentation which does um, kind of specify low, medium and high in terms of a, a tally or a table and with that the associated um, conditions to meet that um, alert, i.e. impossible travel could be a medium state alert, for example, okay? And then once we set this, low, medium, and high, just pick the medium. So at the moment, we're going to assign all users to this policy. Anyone flag medium or above, the enforcement action. We can either allow access, okay, for the, for the time period, or we can block access. Preferably block access, maybe even block access and require a password change. In this instance, sorry, we have to put it to allow and require a password change if you are allowing. If you're blocking, you're just blocking, okay? So there's two elements here. You're either blocking access fully or you're allowing access and requiring a password change off the back of it. So that's for user risk, okay? Risky users. For signing risk, same principle. Assignments, not gonna go through it. Signing risk, low, medium, or high and enforcement controls, and this one should be required MFA, which it is. Okay, so if we're blocking access, once again, we're blocking access. If we're allowing access, we have to require MFA. Okay, it's that two-layer approach of authentication, making sure that user says, 
But when they say, when they try and sign him, they are who they say they are. Okay, they've got that two layer approach for authenticating. It may be they're signing them with their password, their second approach is to authenticate their app on the mobile phone or smartphone. So if we come off here, we've also got the MFA authentication policy, just to, just to note, this is a quick um, enforcement of MFA. Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, January 2024, any per user multi-factor authentication uh, configuration will be transitioned over to the new Lumen approved portal within the Azure AD security pane. Um, that was just a quick note off the back of this while I while I remember. So that's 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 you know why we've got risk policies. That's that's what the risk means in terms of severity, um, and that's implementing the policies and the and the kind of the slight remediation in terms of enforcement action. We've also got the the the, the report. So in terms of the analytics, so have have we seen any risk users? based off my risky policies or based off Microsoft's behavioral analytics and automation. If so, what do I want to do with those users? If I do, if I don't, maybe I've not enforced anything on the policy, I may want to confirm the user is compromised. Okay. What does that do? It'll probably restrict the user account. Okay. Or do I dismiss this user risk? Was it a, a, a benign signing attempt? Was it a false positive? Um, if so, you can mark it and then as per what I said, behavioral analytics, Microsoft's algorithm starts to learn about your actions and the way that end users interact with the system. Okay. We've also got, also got risky sign-ins, same principle. Okay. Maybe we want to configure trusted IPs as well. Maybe we've got an office location or maybe another location other than the office, which is a safe zone. We may want to configure this. Okay. It does also support IPv6 and not just IPv4, so that's worth a note as well. And generally all up, any risk detections, it will show in here uh, for both user and uh, and just general risky signings. So we touched upon policies, we touched upon reporting. Uh, the reporting can be exported to a CSV as well. So if you do go to, to risky users, you can download it. Okay, and you can click uh, click between CSV and, and JSON. You give that a name, save that to a directory you like. You then got two methods of alerting. So you've got the weekly digest. So at the end of the week, you will get a digest email to say, okay, this Z amount of users have been flagged as risky. Um, it may be worth checking the console and uh, remediating or mitigating any of those risks what have been um, identified. Okay. And we've also got the kind of the reactive ones. Um, any users will, are flagged up as risk. Um, whoever you list in here in terms of either admin or just a general um, user account was monitoring this, this console, they will be um, flagged via email that there is a user which needs attention. Other than that, that's, that's identity protection in a, in a nutshell. Um, there is a new and improved dashboard coming soon. Um, this has this has been reworked for the last couple of weeks, of which I expect this to be in GA, um, probably by the end of this month. Um, I'm still yet to hear an announcement, but I'd say by the end of this month, because um, it's been in, in slight preview for a few weeks now. Okay, any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, thank you very much.